I know. Just I beat what, me. We were having a cracking battle in that there one. There we were, yeah. Only a we couple were. of seconds between them. Yeah, I just looked on there. There was not much in it. You just got, it. you got me by less than half a second. Yeah. So, uh, bring on round but three. But then you've got a right RTR and I've got like the full ding dong, haven't I? So. Hello and welcome to Pop Along RC and today we are talking about the RB10 ready to run team associated one tenth two wheel drive buggy. Hopefully you've seen the video where we met up with other YouTubers for the YouTube race. Mr. Kevin Tolbert organized it, uh, he invited Tom Lee RC along and then ourselves and RC Kicks got thrown into the mix. Now then, um, I think, personally, it was a great success, a great event, and fun was had by all. We've had a few questions about um, the guy who came second, and the guy who came second is a YouTuber. Um, at the time of the, the video, when it went out, I believe he had three subscribers and zero videos on his channel. So, uh, if we were, let's just say we were to take him out of the equation, as he didn't actually have any videos or subscribers at the time of the race, um, that would mean Tolbert was first, Mark was second, and Mr. Tomley RC was third, which I think actually is a very fitting podium for the race. Um, I was not on the podium, partly because I was running this. This is the Team Associated RB10 ready to run buggy and Tomley, Tolbert and Mark were all running the team associated RC10 B6.4. Now since the event I have had a chat with Tomley and he's added it up and he reckons his car with radio and everything came in at a staggering £1,200 um, which is mind blowing really. That is a serious piece of kit, a serious piece of race machinery. This is sold as a ready to run and is considerably cheaper. Details down below, uh, price does vary depending on where you get it from. So this car is a fraction of the price. So another thing actually that I was really impressed with is obviously we had the four main YouTubers there all put out videos of the day and all four of the videos were completely different. We got our video out nice and early, which because our video was all about being there, being at the event. Whereas the other videos had slightly diff different narratives and uh, they all made for some really good viewing. But we've not really had an opportunity to reflect on the day and I wanted to talk specifically about this car. So Tom Lee gave us a fantastic shout out because he didn't see himself in a race with Mark or Kev. He was in a race with this, the ready to run. He would never have lived it down if at the end of the day, he would have been beaten by a ready to run RC car. In the first round, I took the win, but even in the first round, if we look at Tom Lee's fastest lap, he was a second a lap quicker than this car. This car, could not stick with those faster cars. However, what I had on my side was some consistent driving. In round two, uh, Tom Lee upped his game, found a little bit of consistency, but again, I picked him to the post and this car came up trumps. However, for the final, I made a couple of little mistakes um, and Tom Lee found some consistency, which meant in the YouTube final race, he did managed to uh, to beat me but do you know what i gave him a fantastic run for his money the youtube race was for us a bit of fun to go down and meet some like-minded people however watching back tomley's video he took that really seriously he'd been up to mb models um and he'd got a pro driver to set his car up and i thought he was taking it extremely seriously and then I watched Tolbert's video and he pretty much did exactly the same. He's had pro 
pro drivers or sponsored drivers setting up all his cars and he was quite open about the fact on race day that the most important thing is car set up and he got someone else to do it for him. Not knocking their driving though, uh, Kev was a really impressive driver around that track and as you've seen from his video, he is a regular at the club. Um, so all things considered, I don't think this ready to run car did a bad job for its first outing at a brand new club going up against some amazing bits of kit. So what next for the RB10? Now I'm actually heading back to the very same club to race this car again, but I've made a few little changes. So obviously the electrics in this car are not as fast as the electrics in the Pro kits. That being said, I wasn't actually able to fully utilize the power that this car had due to the fact that I was suffering from crazy, crazy understeer. Um, so as the day went on, I made a few changes, but since getting home, I've had a proper go at this car and really sorted it out. So if you go to a, a club, and you're running on carpet, most people say that you should be running about 14 to 15 mil ride height. Now I lowered this car as far as I could with the stock shocks and it was about 17, um, yeah, 17 mil. So I was well over on that. Um, therefore, what I've done since is I've actually taken apart all of these shocks and I've added some spacers in underneath the the piston ring so i've put some spaces on the shaft which means that it stops the shaft fully coming out of the the shock which will lower it and i've actually managed to get this now down to about 15 and a half mil ride height which i think is going to make a massive difference i have changed the pinion on the motor to give me a little bit of top end, a bit more top end. That being said, the track at this club is um, quite tight, quite technical, so I could probably afford to go back on the pinion and um, that might actually help have a little bit more punch out of the turns. So another thing I've done to help with front end grip is I've given myself a little bit of toe out at the front. I've also really thickened up the rear shocks. Because this car is rear motor, when you get the power on, the weight wants to shift back and it does a little bit of a wheelie, which unweights the front wheels. If the front wheels are unweighted, you can't steer. To be honest, it's a bit of a lottery. I'm not an expert on buggies. Most of the racing that I've done is with the mini touring cars, touring cars, GT12s and things like that. Boggies are a little bit different, but I'm taking the same sort of theories that I'd use with the touring car and trying to transfer it across to this buggy. So I've changed the oil, I've gone thicker at the rear, a little bit softer at the front, um, and obviously race tyres as well. I'm running the same tyres that everybody else has. Now, one comment that's come through quite a lot is I can, because this is a rear motor car, I could actually change these tyres to slightly softer tyres at the front. Alternatively, I can run slightly harder tyres at the back. And what that will do, it will give the car a balance whereby there's a little bit more front end grip, which will help me turn in. So these are other things that I can look at. I'm probably going to just run these tyres till they wear in um, or wear down. So therefore the grip's going to go off at the back and then I might just replace the fronts like for like so that um, I can improve the front end grip as they go. That way I might get a few extra runs out of these tires. Uh, a lot of people running the faster buggies are probably only getting one night out of their tires. I'm going into my third race event with these tires and it's gonna be a long race event as well. It is going to be a full day of racing um, I'm not sure exactly what the format is as yet, but I'm super excited about getting this car back on the track and having some fun. So if you're interested to see how I get on with this RB10, third time out, um, see if I can do any better than last time, please like, subscribe, hit the old ding dong bell. So a massive thanks to the guys for inviting us along to the YouTube race. I'm really pleased with how our cars performed. 
Um, there will be another video coming out from Mark about his experience with the B6.4 and the sort of changes he's looking to make to that car in preparation for the MKGP, which is coming up very soon. That's about it for now. I've kind of had a little bit of a waffle on about this car. I am super impressed, as I say, for the money, for a beginner getting into the hobby, this car will get you around the track. It's not too fast, it's controllable, and as I say, if you keep it clean, keep yourself out of trouble, you can beat some of the better guys out there. So, uh, wish me luck, and I'll see you again soon.